because it's all on the slides and you can go away and have a look at it yourself. But what I'd rather do, since there's not actually that many of you, um, is hopefully at the end have a bit of time to have a chat about maybe which bits are concerning you the most um, so that we can plan, because I know there's going to be a revision session in January. Oh, hello, come in. Um, I know there's going to be a revision session in January, so we can have a little bit of a talk about what kind of things might be useful to cover then. Um, and also, um, I might next week, if it, if it would be useful, I'll do some more worked examples to some of the questions and put them online as well. So we can have a bit of a chat about what would be most helpful for you all since you're here. Um, so that is the plan for today. Uh, so yes, yeah, so the reason I just wanted to say that now is you can be having a think throughout if there's anything, when I'm going through the topics, if there's anything that jumps out as you at something that's like, you don't know what that is, or you think, oh, that's something I'd actually really like some more help with, then you can tell me that at the end and we'll, we'll figure out what the best way is. Sound good? Good. Okay, right, let's make a start then. I'm going to put my timer on. Do, do, do. And thank you all for coming in to keep me company. <laughs> Uh, right, so the exam, I think the date has gone out already, I can't remember off the top of my head, um, I want to say the 23rd of January, but I might be imagining that, it should be on your timetables. Um, it is a two hour exam, oh, hello, come on in. It is a two hour exam, it will be, uh, you will need to complete all questions, or at least there are marks for all questions, let's put it like that. Hello, 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 come in. You didn't miss much. Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, I guess it's just a matter of whether all the questions are ones that you're able to answer. <laughs> Obviously, um, some things will be more challenging than others. But yes, two hour exam. There's awkwardly 21 questions on the exam because whatever way I did the marking scheme, I end up with 21 questions and I couldn't be bothered to figure out how to get rid of one more. So it's a really weird number of 21 questions. Um, and yes, please complete all questions or attempt all questions if you can. The exam will be PC based, so you will be in a PC cluster um, and it will be on Blackboard with the rest of the, hello, I'm saying hi to everyone because there's so few of you, I'm just excited to see you all. <laughs> Come in. Uh, it will be on a PC cluster, it will be on Blackboard, and the rest of the machine will be locked down. So you will not have access to Excel, MATLAB, the internet, things like that. You will just be able to access the exam. The format itself will be very similar to what you'll have done on the quizzes, um, in terms of how to put in the answers and things like that on Blackboard, so hopefully you'll be very familiar with that. Um, obviously, there'll be people there on the day in case you run into problems, but there shouldn't be anything weird. Calculators are allowed and encouraged. <laughs> you might struggle with some of the questions if you don't bring a calculator, so please bring a calculator. Um, we will not be giving you a formula sheet. I'm highlighting this because I think in some of the past exams you were given a formula sheet. We will not be giving you a formula sheet. I have two reasons for this. One is that, well, you'll see the next one is that you're allowed to bring your own notes, and so I want to make sure that you don't rely on a set of formulas that I've prepared, that you actually do prepare your own notes and bring them in. But the other reason is that I think it's dangerous when you say you're going to give people a formula sheet in case you forget one. <laughs> so because these are the kind of things that I do day to day, it's quite often that there's relationships I know in my head and I might forget to put on a formula sheet. And what I don't want is students sitting there expecting to see something and then there's not the formula that they need. So there will be no formula sheet. So whatever formulas you would like to use in the exam or you think that you'll need, you will need to bring them in on your own notes. So you will all be allowed to bring in one side of A4 with whatever you want on it. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about how I recommend you put that together and what you use that for. Um, we will give you values. So if you need things like the radius of the Earth or you know the distance to Mars or things like that, we will give you those values. The only one I'm just thinking off the top of my head I might not have put in is acceleration due to gravity, but I hope you all know that is 9.81, right, okay, so that's the only thing I could think of off the top of my head that I might have missed out, but I've tried to give you everything that you need. 
Um, in the worst case scenario, if you're working through the exam and you realize there's a value missing in the question and you don't know what it should be, because for example, I've forgotten to write it in, which you know, it happens. Um, if it was given in another question, you know, just say that you're using that value. So for example, I've given the radius of the earth in one question and I forgot to give it somewhere else, but you need it, just take that value. If you've no idea what to use for the value, just say, you know, that, uh, you know, just put in a value um, and you can email me and let me know that something's gone wrong and something was missing and we'll take that into account when we're marking it. Because obviously on Blackboard you can't put in notes or anything like that. So if there's a value missing and there's a problem, just use something that you think is reasonable, send me an email afterwards and we can take that into account in the marking. Okay? I hope it won't happen. We're going to have someone check it to make sure there's nothing missing, but just in case of emergency. Uh, good, and uh, yeah, and one side of A4 notes allowed. Any questions on that? Yes? Is it like format like quiz where you can see all the questions at once on a single page, but you can't like cut through? No, I think you should be able to see them all and move between them. Um, I'll ask IT, but I think that's how, it, that's how I've set it up. I've not done anything weird. Um, and I suppose the only other thing to say on that, which might be of interest to you, is the way I've laid it out is that I've tried to break up the questions as much as possible um, so that I'm not asking you to do like a big, big, long calculation and then put in one number at the end. Because obviously then if you make a tiny mistake, you might end up not getting any marks for that question. So what I've tried to do is break up the questions as much as possible. So it'll ask you like part A might be, for example, to calculate um, the delta V for the first part of a home and maneuver, say for example, if you were doing that, and then do the delta V for the second part of the home and maneuver, and then do the total delta V. So there's lots of opportunities to pick up marks along the way. Yeah? Are we going to hand in like uh, our work solutions? No. No, you're not. The reason for that is that because I've broken it up like this, the way the marks are allocated. It, it wouldn't make any difference. You wouldn't be able to get additional marks by adding in your working because I've broken it down so, so, into such small marks. So that is the plan. Yep. No, the questions are worth different amounts of marks, but it should show you on Blackboard what they're worth. Um, but as I say, because I've broken them up, I think the most any single answer will be worth is about three marks and then out of 100. Um, so. Like I say, I've tried to make it as easy as possible for you to pick up marks throughout. Okay, good. Uh, right, and we'll come back to talk about the notes sheet at the end. Um, cool. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the different topics, just to remind you what we've covered. Um, and like I say, I'm going to fly through this quite quickly, because there's a lot, but you'll have these notes online. Um, and what it basically is telling you is that green text is things that you should have known before, from first year, for example. Uh, examinable material is red. I'm not going to lie, it's most of us. Um, and anything that's not examinable is in blue, okay? Uh, oh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to put those notes together, some ideas about how you might want to approach the revision. Um, and the last thing is that I wanted to remind you, and that's more a note to myself, is that uh, apparently the student survey stuff is going out this week, I think, um, which is like where they ask you about the classes, the units, and what you've liked, what you haven't liked. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll talk a little bit about that at the end. Okay. So, the first chapter that we covered that is examinable is the spacecraft environment. Um, Kate covered this with you. Um, and so again, there's just some ideas in here about the kind of things that you might be asked about in relation to the space environment. Most things in here are kind of um, facts and understanding. So thinking about things like um, the kind of where space starts, thinking about the Van Allen belts and radiation and the different um, hazards to your spacecraft that you might get in space and how that influences your overall space um, spacecraft design. Um, and that's basically the same thing again. So just again thinking about the different types of hazards that our spacecraft has to deal with. So when it's being launched, for example, um, once it's in orbit, what are the dangers that our spacecraft faces? Um, and then talking a little bit about uh, space debris as well. So hopefully all of that sounds familiar, um, but it's mostly kind of that understanding of the space environment and how it affects our spacecraft. Questions? No. Uh, I won't keep saying questions, just shove your hands up if anything looks alarming. All right. Okay. 
Chapter three, so this was all with me. So this is orbit mechanics. So this, there's a little bit of a balance between some sort of understanding and knowledge questions and also some practical calculations as well. So um, understanding the terms that we learned. So there were things like apogee and perigee. I hope I hammered those home to you at this stage. Um, Kepler's laws, what they mean and what they are. You will not need to derive them. I will say this again, you do not need to derive anything in the, in the, in the exam, no derivations. Um, so just anywhere I've forgotten to put it in, no derivations. Um, hello. Um, our conic sections, so again, you might remember the scones, scones, scone debate. Uh, your sconic sections, what they are, um, what they mean, what different properties they have. Um, Newton's laws, you're expected to know beforehand, but those are more just foundational for what you need to understand. Uh, and then energy in orbits and velocity in orbits and things like that. So this is basically thinking about, um, if you remember, we talked about that vis viva equation. So this equation that we got from Kepler's laws that tells us how fast things are moving in orbit, essentially, um, how we can balance our potential and kinetic energy and what that translates to for each of the different types of orbits that we're interested in. So um, a circular, an ellipse, a parabola, and a hyperbola, um, how the potential energy and the kinetic energy uh, exist in those types of orbits and what that means. Um, and then basically, yes, there was that general velocity equation, and we looked at what that might mean for circular orbits versus elliptical orbits versus parabolic and hyperbolic orbits, and how we would calculate the velocity of a spacecraft in one of those types of orbits using its orbit parameters. Okay, so hopefully, again, nothing too alarming there, but mostly in that bit, it's kind of that knowledge and then how you calculate a spacecraft velocity, essentially. And then we moved on a little bit to um, trying to look at, okay, what, how do we describe an orbit? What does it mean? Um, so we've got things here about, like, the ecliptic plane, the vernal equinox. Um, understanding what those mean is important, not necessarily to be able to describe them, but to use them in the equations that you need to use or to set up a problem and understand what's happening. When we think about, for example, the, the thermal analysis, the position of your spacecraft is obviously quite important. So we want to be able to understand these terms. Um, yep. Correct. The way I think of it is that it's a fixed point off in the distance, basically. Almost a fixed point in the stars, if you want, that we can uh, calculate um, the position of things relative to. Okay, and then really important thing here, your Keplerian orbit elements, yeah? So you'll have gone through those in your GMAT. We spent a lot of time with a hula hoop and a pumpkin, if you recall. Uh, going through these in class um, as to what each of those mean. Um, so very important to know what they mean because uh, you might be asked to describe them or to use them to set up an orbit or describe an orbit. So make sure you know your orbit elements. All right, and then what else on this? Ah, common types of orbits. So we talked about low Earth orbit, uh, geostationary orbit, various things like that, the advantages and disadvantages of them for different usages. Um, and we looked at ground tracks, so what the ground tracks of these different orbits looks like, and crucially, how you can estimate the inclination and the orbit period of a satellite from looking at its ground track. Um, so I think, my memory serves me right, we kind of had to rush a bit of that in class but I know I put an answer about it on Piazza and I know it came up in one of the quiz questions. So make sure that you're happy with that. Okay, and then all the other stuff about how many satellites there are and what we use them for and things. That's just fun information for you to know. Good, okay, and then orbit maneuvers. I'll go through these and then I'm gonna take a breather and let you have a think in case there's any questions. Um, so orbit maneuvers. So again, you'll have done the quiz questions on this. They'll be fairly similar to what you've attempted in the quiz questions in relation to this. But it's really thinking about, you've, we've already said you need to be able to calculate orbit velocities. Using that ability to calculate orbit velocities to determine delta Vs for certain transfers, orbit transfers. So. Obviously, we looked at a whole range of them. We might be moving from a circle to an ellipse or an ellipse back to a circle. Um, you might be looking at a Hohmann transfer, 
um, which is one of our most commonly used transfers. Um, so that's an important one to be able to calculate. And some other things that you might want to look at are um, the plane change maneuvers, the delta V for the plane change. We had the simple plane change where we didn't do anything else, we just changed our plane. And then the combined one where we also change the size or shape of the orbit at the same time. Um, rendezvous maneuvers was basically, if you remember, similar to a Hohmann transfer, but it's just that we were going back to the same orbit to, to catch up or slow down to catch up with a different um, a different satellite. And then these other ones, bi-elliptic transfer and one tangent transfer, we didn't look at the calculations for those in class, um, and I think we only kind of briefly touched on them. But basically, the only thing you need to know about those is um, when you would use one as opposed to using a Hohmann transfer, um, when they're useful, and kind of what they look like. Okay, so that's all the orbity type stuff, I think. So before I hop on to the next stuff, any questions? Thinking back to pumpkins, hula hoops, does everything sound about right? Anything in there that's surprising? No? Okay, good. Just want to make sure I haven't like blanked a whole thing. <laughs> thought, thought I've taught you something that I haven't, so as long as it all lines up with what you're expecting, we're all good. Okay, let's fly through the next stuff then. So, uh, spacecraft propulsion and launch systems. So, this would have been Kate's class. Um, so, basically, things like uh, typical thrust values and stuff like that, you don't need to know. That's just for your information. Um, the key things are going to be your rocket equation. Uh, again, there will be no, I didn't type it on this one because that was Kate's, but um, no derivations on the exam. So, don't worry about deriving the rocket equation from Newton's laws. Um, but obviously, you want to be familiar with where it comes from and how it works. And most importantly, things like when you can use it and when you can't use it. Um, exhaust plumes and nozzles. So again, this is more knowledge of the idea of under-expansion and over-expansion of plumes. Um, and then some key stuff down here, uh, the idea of specific in impulse um, and how that applies, obviously, to what we're doing when we're trying to calculate the performance of propulsion systems. Um, basically, uh, in here, in terms of calculation -y stuff, you're going to be looking at how to apply the rocket equation to calculate uh, the mass of propellant that you need for a particular maneuver. Also, maybe considering gravity losses and drag losses when you're launching. Um, and what we mean here by system performance is thinking about things like if we give you a specific thruster, can it perform the maneuvers that we've suggested it should be able to perform, for example. Um, and then multi-stage rockets. So this, I think, if, again, if memory serves me, Kate didn't get a chance to cover in class, but it will have come up on your quiz questions and I think possibly also on the coursework she says, not really sure. Um, but make sure that you have a look at multi-stage rockets. So the idea of if you have a rocket and you wanted to get a certain mass into orbit, how do you calculate the mass of propellant that you need in each stage of the rocket? Okay, um, It's definitely in your notes. It was definitely on the quiz. Highly recommend you look over that because I know it wasn't covered in class, so just, yeah. Good. Okay. Um, fine. And then the last thing on launch systems um, is uh, basically launch site location. So influence, oh, I don't know why that's blue. Um, influence on required delta V, I, th I think this might be backwards. So I think influence on required delta V should be blue. Launch windows um, should be red. So that's my mistake. I will change that now before I forget. Uh, but what about on the, uh, or I won't. Sorry? What about on the uh, blackboard? I'll update it. Thanks. Um, or not, since apparently it won't let me edit anything. <laughs> well, that's just depressing. It is, isn't it? Okay, I will change it later. If I haven't done it, someone remind me. Um, I will do that. In fact, I'll just write it down, because otherwise I will forget, let's be honest. So yeah, so launch windows is thinking about, um, yeah, launch windows, I, I don't believe <laughs> launch windows. Um, 
in terms of like how many launch windows you might have available to get into a certain orbit, for example. Okay, right, good, glad we've gone through that. Thermal stuff then, I did this one. Uh, so why do we need thermal control? Why is it important? What kind of different factors influence thermal control? So we talked about our solar radiation, our albedo radiation, all those kind of things, um, our earth shine. A lot of this is, um, yeah, some of it is also about remembering how to do the calculations as well, because if you think, if you remember back, we talked about how solar radiation is different to Earth IR radiation, and we needed to use different ways of calculating them and things. So, um, so yeah, so it's not just understanding what they mean and being able to describe them, but also understanding how to use them to actually calculate the thermal balance equations. Um, Material properties, understanding absorptivity and emissivity and albedo, like again, all these kind of stuff, how they actually turn up in the thermal equilibrium calculations. Um, and also, yeah, basically how to take what you're given in terms of like an orbit and a situation and work out what thermal properties you need to take into account. So when do you need to account for solar radiation, when do you not, and things like that. So you need to be able to work through all of that yourself. Um, and da, 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 da. yeah, basically determine the thermal equilibrium temperature for a spacecraft using analytical methods. Hello. Hi. Yeah, so I think the way it worked in the ones on the quizzes, right, was that if you worked through them, eventually area cancelled out. So it kind of worked out okay in the end, but I know that throws everybody um, each time. Yes, you'll be given explicit values in the, in the, um, in the thing. Exam, yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. In the exam, yes. Um, so, yes, yeah, so this should be very similar to the examples that you've done on your quizzes. There shouldn't be any surprises um, in there. Um, and yeah, and then basically the, the last thing here, it's not really, well, thinking about the kind, oh, that's on the next page. Oh yeah, it is, thermal control systems. So thinking about how, when we find out our spacecraft is too hot or too cold, what can we do to fix that? Um, and being aware of some of those methods. Um, and again, I don't know why requirements for radiator mounting is in there. That is definitely not on the exam, because I don't entirely know what that means. <laughs> so I will take that one out. Uh, okay. Right. Power. So again, this would have been Kate's. Um, so this is thinking about, uh, so there's a lot of stuff here in terms of understanding the different types of power systems that we can have on a spacecraft. So solar arrays, RTGs, fuel cells, and their advantages and their disadvantages. Um, key parameters relating to batteries, so thinking about things like their capacity and their depth of discharge, various different elements like that around batteries and what's important for us to know. And then again, a key thing here, basic analytical methods to size your batteries and size your solar arrays. So again, they should be fairly similar to what's come up on the quizzes. Uh, communications, um, basically understand the key types of uh, communication system architecture. So thinking about your antennas, the different types of antennas um, that might be involved, and uh, orbit types for communication systems. So um, where, like, what are the advantages and disadvantages of some of those orbit types for communications? And we talked about some of those in the orbit section as well. Uh, da, 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 da. Key features of digital modulation schemes. Um, and again, calculating uh, a link budget for a communications link. Um, and I know that one is always a bit of a nightmare in the coursework, um, but uh, I think that might be one of the things that people said they were keen to go over in the revision session. Um, so again, we can chat a little bit about that, but um, do make sure you're able to do that. And attitude determination and control. So again, describing the key requirements for attitude controls, the different types of disturbances that you might experience on a spacecraft, 
Um, maybe what kind of orbits would you experience those disturbances in? So where would you experience drag? Where would you not experience drag? Um, those kinds of things. Um, and uh, is that on the next page? Yes. Um, and yeah, basically, again, using your annual analytical methods to calculate the disturbance torques that you might experience on the spacecraft, um, and then also uh, the kind of torques that you might need to counter those and restabilize. So again, these should be very reflective of what you'll have done in the quizzes. And then the last thing is basically understanding what the different types of attitude determination systems are. So things that help us figure out what our attitude is. So things like star trackers, uh, things like um, sun sensors and so on. Um, and also knowing the attitude, uh, the hardware that allows us to do attitude control. So things like reaction wheels and thrusters and magnetotorquers and so on. And knowing the difference between the two of those. Okay, right, so that is all of the different topics. Anything there that looks alarming? <laughs> nope, everyone happy enough? Nothing surprising? Okay, as I say, I mean, most of it's red. It, <laughs> there's not really a lot I can do um, there, but as you'll see, like a lot, I think it looks like a lot, but actually when you dig into it, a lot of it hopefully will be stuff that you already really well understand from the classes. So things like, for example, um, the different types of orbits, uh, how you calculate velocities, um, your conic sections and things. Hopefully when you look back over those, it'll all come rushing back um, and it's not really about memorizing them. They should hopefully be all familiar to you. Um, and a lot of the other stuff is underpinning how you do those calculations. So again, if you work through those kind of quiz type questions, most of it should be, be clear. Okay, all right, so that is pretty much it um, for the topics. Now I'm gonna talk through a little bit about the way the exam will be formatted and on the basis of that, how I suggest you tackle studying and putting your notes together. So, um, some people, someone asked earlier, will there be different, is everything the same marks? No, it's not. So the exam is, I would say, a fairly good mix of um, in-depth calculation questions so something like, for example, if you were being asked to do uh, a significant number of manoeuvres, obviously that would be quite a long question, um, which would be worth a lot of marks. But as I say, I've broken it down so you can get marks for each stage the whole way through. Um, or something like doing the thermal analysis, obviously that's quite an in-depth question. But again, I've broken it down. So those would be worth quite a lot of marks. Then there's some sort of more simple calculation questions in there as well. So those might be things around, like if I asked you to calculate the velocity of a spacecraft in an orbit, that's a reasonably straightforward one to do. Um, or maybe calculating the mass of propellant for a simple um, maneuver where we've given you the delta V and everything that you need. So some simpler kind of calculations in there as well. And then the rest of them are basically um, they're not multiple choice, they're multiple multiple choice, whatever you call them, where you can tick multiple answers. Um, so things like, I don't know, identify all the sources of thermal flux that a spacecraft experiences or something like that, right? And there'll be a list of answers and you need to pick um, which ones are the right ones for that. Um, on those, they will be set up with negative marking. So don't just tick all five answers, right? Because obviously the right one will be in there um, or the right ones will be in there. Don't do that. Uh, there will be negative marking for the wrong answers. So you will only get full marks if you select the right answers and only the right answers. Um, but there are a nice selection of theory questions in there as well. So on that basis, um, thinking about the revision plan, this is kind of how we suggest going about it. So I've already said that the quizzes are a really good resource. They're very reflective of the kinds of questions that you can expect to see on the exam. Um, and as well as that, there are past exam papers up on Blackboard and I've put up one from last year as well, just last week. So that one I've put up from last year, I set most of that and I set this year's exam, so you can all be mad at me afterwards. Um, but it means that last year's exam is fairly reflective of the kind of questions that you can expect to see this year. Because I know some of the older ones are in a slightly different format. So with that in mind, what we would recommend is that when you approach your studying, you go through your notes. So obviously you've got the, the course notes online, which are excellent. Hopefully you'll have your own notes. You've got your lecture slides and so on. 
that you go through the topics and you kind of summarize your points, note down what's important to know, what's not important to know, what equations you might need, and so on. Um, if you can, try and get it down to one side of A4, but I wouldn't stress about that too much at this stage. I would just think about taking some notes. Um, and maybe what you could do is take the key equations or the key things that you think you'll need out onto an A4 sheet at that stage. So you've got maybe a longer list of notes, but take out a sort of sample practice A4 sheet. And then work through some example questions. So there's some in the notes themselves at the end of the chapters. There's obviously the quizzes that you can go back over and there's the past exam papers as well. So using this set of A4 notes that you've created, work through some of those questions um, and see how you get on. And the key thing is that you'll identify if there's equations that you need that you haven't written down or if there's particular facts that just aren't sticking in your head that you feel like, Do you know, what? I really need to make sure they get on the notes. So work through a few things through each topic, see how you get on. And then once you've done that, revise the notes sheet to include some more detail because there'll be things that you've missed. There'll be things that you realize you don't really need on the notes because actually having done this many questions, they're jammed in your head for all eternity. Um, so you can revise it then to get it down to what you need for 1A4 uh, sheet and then repeat on some more questions. My final recommendation on this um, is I like to keep an exam paper aside to the very end as like a practice. So I would do all of this personally, you can do whatever you like obviously, but personally I would do all of this using the quiz questions and some exam papers, but leave one exam paper as a separate example, potentially last year's one if you haven't already had a go at it. Um, or even if you have, let's be honest, you'll have forgotten by January probably with everything else you're studying for. So leave that aside. And then once you're happy with your final A4 notes page, sit down and try and do that exam paper in the two hours and see how you get on. Um, that would be my personal approach. And uh, then this one is a, a tip from Kate. I've never tried this, but I think this is quite an interesting one, is um, see if you can write your own questions to so see if you can think about what kind of questions might come up um, and what the answer would be. Because obviously if you can write your own questions, then you can certainly answer them. <laughs> so that's the logic behind that one. Um, but I personally have never tried it. Cool, does that all make sense? I mean, I feel like it's, I'm not saying anything profound here. Um, but that's just my personal suggestion on how I would approach this. In terms of the kinds of things to put on your notes sheets, there's two things that I'll say. Um, one is it's entirely up to you how you choose to use that notes sheet. I have seen some incredibly tiny writing, uh, which is <laughs> incredibly impressive that people have managed to cram that much into their notes sheets. I will say something, which is that We've noticed, particularly with open book exams, like fully open book exams, students can actually end up doing worse because they spend so long looking for things that they've written down or that are in the, they're sure is in the book somewhere that they actually end up not doing the questions because they're so busy looking for things. Whereas actually, you know it, you're well capable of doing it. If you just stop and think for a second and take a breath, you'll be able to approach it. So. Feel free to write as tiny as you want and cram as much on that notes sheet as you want. But what you don't want to do is spend half the exam squinting at something with a magnifying glass trying to find what you're looking for, right? So that's the first thing is having more doesn't necessarily mean that you will do better. And we've seen that over the last couple of years because of what COVID has forced. Uh, the second thing is that putting together the A4 sheet, if you take your time and do it properly like this, is actually a really good form of revision because it's forcing you to stop and think about what kind of questions might come up, what kind of equations you need, what stuff sticks in your brain really well and you don't need to write down and what stuff maybe doesn't and you want to actually really capture that. So do take the time, don't just rush this the day before and start shoving down equations. Like do do this alongside your study because it will help. I think that's pretty much all I have to say on that. Any questions? Nope. Okay, right, the last thing then, and then we'll just have a bit of a chat, is um, this student survey thing. So I believe it's slightly different format this year to what it was last year, it's not on Blackboard, you're gonna get emailed with a link, something, something. 
Um, so watch out for the email when it comes in so that you can click the link and you can do the student survey and kind of give some feedback on the units. Um, why is this important? Because I know with everything else you have going on, it probably just feels like a bit of a waste of time. Um, or it can. Uh, maybe if you've got some fantastic complaints you want to register, then it doesn't seem like so much of an ordeal. But um, there's two reasons that I think it's important. One is that from our perspective, obviously, we want to be able to improve our units for the future. So we want to be able to improve this unit for the next set of students coming through. But also, we will be teaching a unit next um, year as well and uh, you know and not just what I'm doing but my colleagues will be teaching other units and stuff obviously as you move through your degree so if you can tell us what works for you and what doesn't work for you we can share that information and we can make sure that the courses that we're delivering suit you better yeah so it does have value for you even though it possibly feels like well I'm moving on how does this help it does get shared around and we do try and um, share good practice around the department so that everything um, gets improved the other thing is that, uh, and this was in the email that came out to me, and I thought, actually, that's a really good point, which is that we want all views represented. So I think there tends to be um, a situation where the people who shout the loudest get heard the most. So, you know, if somebody has a real problem with something, you know, they might um, send a lot of emails or, or they might, you know, raise an issue or whatever, which is fine. Obviously, if there's a serious issue, that's absolutely so important. But obviously, everyone has a view. Um, and we've got a really diverse cohort of students from all different backgrounds and so on. So we want to hear from everyone so that we can really understand that we're not just teaching in a way that suits the majority, for example, that, and some people are being left behind. So we want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to share that opinion um, and have their view represented. So I think that's a really good reason to take part. Okay. Um, whoops. And yeah, obviously you can always contact us directly, but this is probably the best way to get your views heard because you can imagine emails just get buried in people's inboxes, whereas this is something that goes on the record um, and it will be officially looked at. So it is, it is important and it's, it's really helpful for us. Okay, so that's everything that I wanted to cover. So I'm going to open the floor to the like 12 of you that are now here. Woo! Um, so and see what your thoughts are, what kind of topics you're finding the hardest um, and what we can do to kind of help out with that. So can I get someone to bravely shout out what they think the most challenging topic is at the moment and then we'll do a show of hands. Communications. Okay, show of hands for who thinks communications is the worst topic. Okay, so there's a, a good few struggling with communications. Okay, right, well that's good to know. Let me make a note of that. Um, is that the... Uh, sorry, well, I'm trying to type with my left hand. Not a good idea. Is that the sort of the calculations of the link budget or is it the general concept? General, just general... Communications problems. Yep. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. That's good to know. Thank you. All right. So, um, what all what all of this I will feed back to the the TAs the GTAs who are going to be running the. Revision, my brain is not functioning. The revision class in January, um, so that's good. Um, and the other thing is that, like I say, I'm happy to do a couple of videos working through a couple of questions um, next week and put them online for you to have a look at over Christmas. So I've put up a few on the orbit mechanics-y type stuff, but I don't think I've done any on um, the other areas. So if that would be a helpful one, then that's something I can do. Yeah. Yes, I remember this coming up last year. Um, I didn't teach communications last year either, so I, I'm not a fan of communications. Um, but yes, I remember decibels being a problem. And I actually think I have a set of slides on that specifically. So I will 
if I can find them, I will put them on Blackboard as well. Um, good. Okay, any other topics that people are finding tricky or just specific questions or anything like that? Some of the harder maneuver questions. Okay, and what is it about those that you find the most challenging? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to check. So that, that makes sense. Yeah, and I think that's, I mean, to be honest, that's the hardest part of doing these kind of maneuver calculations is working out where to, where you're starting and once you do one maneuver where you are now to kind of try and do the next one. Um, what I'd suggest is in the uh, in the lecture I talked a little bit about like how, how to draw them out and kind of think about maybe redrawing them at each stage like draw a dot where you start then where your next maneuver is then where your next maneuver is and kind of keep track as you move through as to what your um, yeah what your sort of velocities are and your altitudes and stuff are at each stage um, I think I've done some video examples for those on Blackboard. Have you looked at those? No. Okay. Um, I, I posted the announcement on Piazza, but I'm not sure whether that actually goes to everyone because um, clearly not everyone has seen these videos. So um, what I would suggest is have a look at those on Blackboard. If they're useful, great. If they're not, email me and let me know what would be more useful and I'll do another one because those are easy for me to do. So if I have to do a communications one, I have to think about it, but those I can do quite quickly. Um, so have a look at those on Blackboard. Uh, I definitely put an announcement on Piazza as to where they are. I think they're under additional resources in Blackboard. Um, so yeah, but email me then if, if it's not actually helping and I'll do something else. Does that, is that good? No problem. Great. Any other thoughts? Uh, yes? Ooh, that's not good. Okay, <laughs> I will get those um, released hopefully today. Um, right, sorry, I'm just writing things down. Maneuvers. Ah. So that was quizzes nine and 10. Okay. It might be tomorrow, because I think Kate possibly needs to do that, but I will do that as soon as I can. Um, good. How do we feel about thermal? That's fine. Fine. Good. Excellent. How do we feel about attitude determination and control? Generally okay. Yeah. Um, launch and propulsion? I mentioned some stuff that you should definitely look at in there. <laughs> um, so hopefully that'll help. Okay, good point. Uh, a video on that maybe then, because obviously I can't do it today, but yeah, a video on that and maybe actually in the, the revision lecture as well in January would be a good show. Good, good idea. Thank you. Okay, all right. Well, it sounds like it's not, it's not too alarming. Um, you seem to be on the ball, so hopefully it will all be fine. I'm sure it will all be fine. Um, has anyone looked at the videos that I did on Blackboard at all? I think they're under additional resources. Does that sound like a place they might be? They're not. Under course content? Course content on the left bar. So I can't remember what folder it's in. It's in one of those. It might be an additional resource. I think there might also be worked examples that are just written from last year, so those will be there as well. Um, good. Okay. Glad we cleared that up. <laughs> so do take a look at those. Um, if they're helpful, let me know. I will do more. If they're not helpful, also let me know. I won't spend my Christmas doing more. <laughs> so, um, But no, I'm happy to do that, and I think the Stage Rockets one is a good idea. Um, so I will definitely do that. 
Okay, any general questions, concerns? Before I let you back out into the cold? No? 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 Okay, good. All right. Um, I suppose the only last thing I will say, and this is just being pragmatic as much as anything else, is um, try, if you do have questions coming up to the exam, um, particularly through sort of the first couple of weeks of January, do put them on the piazza rather than emailing myself or Kate, because we get emailed as soon as you put them on piazza, so you will see them, um, but also the GTAs will see them, and I'm just conscious that in that, in those first couple of weeks it's going to be quite busy for us so I don't want things getting missed so please if you have questions put them on the piazza you will get an answer much faster than if you email us because you can imagine after a week's holiday how backlogged our emails can get so just make sure that you use the piazza to your advantage um, and try not to leave questions till the last minute um, because obviously that puts everyone under pressure to try and get things sorted so the sooner the better all right, well, thank you all very much for coming in this morning. I really appreciate it. And thank you for this lecture. You're very welcome. Um, I won't see you in the exam. I won't be there, um, but I'll wish you the very best of luck. And I will see you in, well, uh, in, in year three um, for conceptual design. So. <laughs> see you this. Goodbye. Have a good one. And I don't, I, I will say, I put a shamrock up or a four leaf clover up there just because I'm Irish. I don't really do good luck for exams because I don't think people need them. I think if you work hard, you will do great in the exams. So I will just say, enjoy it. Wait, you're Irish? I am, yes. That's nice. I know, I know. I, I've given away the, the, the game now. I know there was a guessing game going on, but yes, I am See Irish. This. Goodbye, have a good one. Hello. I would say there's a good split. It's probably, I can't remember, I did look at this and, and get the stats. I'd say it's about two thirds calculations, but some of those will be quite short. No problem. Hi. Yeah. So, so it's on question one on thermal control. Yeah. If it is referred to like um, what, avoiding total failure of thermals or like just generally. Is it a thermal core? Yeah. 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 But again, as long as you state what you're assuming, then that's fine. So if you say, um, if we're just considering thermal danger, then this is the answer. That's totally fine. No problem. Which one? <laughs> well, I'm so behind. I'm like so behind a lot. But anyway, my course for thermal control, like the, the thermal system, sorry, I'm going to use thermal control anymore. So, um, yeah, like the graph, like it goes like, so I'm not sure what that's not the end. Okay. Um, but I, can I show you? Um, yes, but we should pop well. We sh I actually have to be in a meeting in 10 minutes. That's not ideal. but. Um, and also there's a good chance I won't be able to answer it. Um, 
can you come to the tutorial tomorrow morning? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm as enthusiastic as you about that. I'm but. just like, oh my god, I can't talk about it or I'll cry. Trust me. <laughs> it will be fine. I promise. I, I just hope that you are all right. Goodbye. Bye. Can you have multiple submissions to the call for that? Just in case, like, I'll submit it today. Like the last one. I think it's, I don't know, does it say on Blackboard whether you get multiple I'm submissions? Sure. Well, if, I mean, as long as Blackboard allows it, oh, I don't so see that being right. a problem. Yeah. Oh, um, the only thing I'll say is we had some issues with, I can't what it was, um, but if like, people were saying which one they wanted marked and stuff like that, so just try and make sure whatever the last one you upload yeah. is, is the right. one that okay. you want marked. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much. No problem. See you. No problem, have a good day and a nice winter break.